And remember, kids, fruit, fruit prevents, prevents scurvy. scurvy! Yes, today we're talking about the British Royal Navy, their attempts to stave off the vitamin C deficiency disease, scurvy, and the ever so delicious and year-round sipper, especially now that it's getting a little warmer, the Gimlet, on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, my name is Michael, I'm a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we're diving into another historical cocktail that may be one of, like, only a handful of cocktails that are actually medicinal in their purpose. So, there is this condition called scurvy, and that's where all of this kind of starts. Uh, essentially, it's caused by a vitamin C deficiency, and it leads to things like weak bones, sores, muscle aches, and eventually, actually, it can progress to a point where it can be fatal. Now, this is particularly common in sailors, especially those of the British Royal Navy who are at sea for months, if not more, at a time, and do not have access to fresh produce. In order to stave this off and sort of improve morale, uh, on the ships, the British Royal Navy attempts to create this thing called grog, which we're not going to talk about specifically today because it is a different thing, but the idea was to combine a rum ration with lemon, or excuse me, lime, water, and sugar in order to provide them with a drink that was both morale boosting, because who doesn't, you know, a stiff drink is always going to make you happier, but also uh, to give them some sort of vitamin C that would keep them from dying. Now, the problem with this is that you really can't keep fresh limes on a ship. They're not exactly the right environment where they won't simply mold over in a matter of days, sitting at room temperature on salt water. Uh, so it's not a perfect solution, but it does get them through until 1865. In 1865, uh, a, uh, chem uh, a culinary uh, a chef, I suppose I'll call him, uh, whose name is Lind, uh, they go off and they develop a way to preserve lime juice and limes without using alcohol. Uh, and this becomes Rose's lime juice. Now, Rose's lime juice is a lime cordial that uses a high sugar content to stabilize and uh, also um, clarify lime juice so that it does not spoil as fast. What was once a struggle to keep fresh vitamin C high or vitamin C rich fruits and vegetables on a ship for anything longer than a week became the easiest thing you could possibly do as a single bottle of cordial could replace pounds upon pounds of limes in their equivalent value for sailors. As a result, lime cordial became the replacement for fresh lime juice uh, following its invention. And then around 1870, 1880, we start to see that be combined with gin. Like I said, sailors were given rum rations, but British officers were considerably more fond of gin. And when it came time to take your daily vitamin C, they saw no better way than to mix it with their gin and have a gimlet. Now, Gimlet, that name, too, fun fact, it's actually named after the doctor who discovered in 1765 that uh, vitamin C prevents scurvy. So that's the most likely place the name comes from. There's a couple other stories, but that's a cool little nod and a little bit of respect paid to a hardworking member of the medical society, I hope. I haven't looked into his person. I really hope I didn't just make a mistake in saying that. Anyway, the Gimlet uh, hits the world as the British Navy travels around and eventually it becomes a cocktail, a classic cocktail staple using this kind of new and cool and fascinating preserved lime juice that has a very particular flavor and sort of a stringent quality to it, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. Now, over the years, it's appeared in its original form in places like the Savoy Cocktail Book and I think the 1930s and then a couple places prior to and after that. But in the modern day, it's made a little bit differently. You know, the conveniences of modern shipping and refrigeration mean that limes are at an all-time easy to get. Um, even here in Michigan, where it can't decide if it wants to snow or rain, people often make them now with just gin, lime juice, and simple syrup, like you would a classic gin sour. Which is fine, but it does miss some of the character that is provided by the lime cordial, which, to be entirely clear, there are plenty of lime cordials, but Rose is the correct one to use historically. Just putting that out there. While people can try to gussy up the gimlet and the idea of it with really fresh ingredients, it really benefits specifically from being made with a cordial. Uh, and the really the best way to modernize it is to make your own, something that we'll go into at a later date on the show because I do want to start doing cool culinary hacks like that. That's about all that there is to say about the gimlet itself. So let's go ahead and make one. And in particular, we're going to make one of my preferred spec. Now, we're going to make a gimlet, so let's talk about exactly what that consists of. And really, it is as simple as it can get. 
just gin and lime cordial. Typically speaking, it's combined two parts to one, two parts gin to one part lime cordial, but recipes do vary as far as whether or not you should increase the gin to favor the botanicals or keep it at sort of a standard martini spec. Really, that's how I like to think about it. A gimlet can be made in much the same way as a martini would be, substituting the vermouth in a martini for lime cordial in a gimlet. And to a certain extent, you can increase and decrease and swap around proportions as much as you want to create a drink that you prefer. Personally, wouldn't drink a reverse gimlet with two ounces of lime cordial and one ounce of gin, but hey, if that's what you're feeling, go for it. <laughs> Personally, I think that there's actually a better way to go about it, and that is to sort of embrace the citrus impacts and provide a complimentary garnish to the cocktail that otherwise wouldn't be there. So a classic gimlet we're gonna say is two ounces of gin and one ounce of lime cordial. I prefer to go slightly higher on those proportions, like just keeping them in scale, but scaling them up slightly, and then adding a couple of very simple additions. First of those is some lemon bitters, and I use Fee Brothers. First of all, this is going to add a complimentary citrus note underneath that lime cordial to sort of broaden it out and make it a more full flavor. And also, this bitters in particular has a nice opaqueness to it, which gives the cocktail a sort of opalescent, absinthe-like loche, which is really, really fun and very nice to look at. The second addition we're making actually isn't in the cocktail per se, it's just the garnish. Um, a classic gimlet doesn't have a garnish. I mean, you could put a lime wedge on it or a lime wheel, but the essence of the drink is that those things aren't available and that's why we're using cordial. So going without is actually more appropriate. In this case though, I think that it's nice to add just a complimentary garnish of some basil, just an expressed piece of basil floating on top of the drink. If I had micro basil, I'd use that, but all I have is full size basil today, so we're gonna use that instead. Without further ado, let's go ahead and make my version of a gimlet. Now that's going to start with a full one and a half ounces of our lime cordial. And really what I'm doing here is scaling this up to fit the glass I'll be putting it in. I have some larger cocktail coupes that um, have more headroom in them, so I'm filling that up. But also, by doing that, I've had more, I give myself more room to introduce specifically this bitters, because as we'll discuss, this has a very astringent bitterness to it. That is what makes it recognizable as the ingredient in a gimlet and you don't wanna overdo it by adding the bitters. So scaling it up was the only way to do so without making all of this unpalatable. Next up, we are going to need three full ounces of a London Dry Gin specifically. You could theoretically use something like Hendrix, but it isn't technically correct because the real thing you're looking for is a complement between sort of sharp gin botanicals like juniper and citrus namely, and a, and, and that kind of intense limeness. Those two go together really well. Something like Hendrix, which is more uh, uh, sort of tea-like and has like a sort of cucumbery note to it, which I think is actually part of how they make it. It's not quite right. If it's more to your taste, go for it, but it doesn't necessarily track as an actual gimlet. We're going to make my addition of two dashes of lemon bitters, which you can see are filling out that drink in such a fascinating kind of smoky way. Hopefully that comes through on the camera. And that's all that we need to do as far as putting things into our, our stirring cup. So I'm gonna grab some ice and then we'll stir this to chill and dilute. Now this whole time I've been kind of operating on the pretense that you might know that a Gimlet is actually a stirred cocktail, but you're also hearing me say lime juice, so what gives? Well, Rose's lime juice is a lime cordial, and the difference between the two is that this is not only preserved and sweetened, but also contains no pulp. Pulp is the enemy, the absolute enemy of rectified and like preserved uh, juices. So it doesn't have any of those pulp contents that we would normally want to shake to aerosolize them. Like you wouldn't say a daiquiri or even a lime gin sour like you would find for a modern gimlet. We don't have to do that here, so it's actually more, more appropriate to simply stir it. So we're gonna do that with two cracked cubes of ice. Once we have our ice in there, we're going to stir for about 15 seconds or until the ice noticeably loosens up when you try to spin it around the glass. With that firmly stirred, I'm going to grab my, like I said, rather large cocktail coops, and I'm going to take a Hawthorne strainer and simply strain it out like so. As you can see, this is a nice bright shade of green, sort of bordering on like a like a yellow green, almost almost like a chartreuse, but not quite so vibrant. Um, and that is done not just by the lime cordial, but also that addition of those bitters is giving it some of that 
opaqueness that I think looks just so nice. Finish that off, we're gonna go ahead and give our leaf of basil here just a good smack to express those oils and uh, in my case, uh, tear the absolute fuck out of it. Whoops. Put that on top of the drink. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that is my spec for a classic styled gimlet. So with our station cleaned up and for the first time, my hands like freshly washed because that basil just exploded on me. We're gonna go ahead and give our modernized, I suppose, spec of a classic gimlet a sip. Man, that is just, that is just perfect. Oh my God. Yes. So there's a certain kind of astringency I've been alluding to this whole time with Rose's lime juice. And the thing about it is that that's what a gimlet does. It has this extremely bracing, sea wind-like, just in your face tartness. And it, it, it makes you do that thing where like, like when you like eat a warhead, it kind of sucks the moisture out of your mouth. You want to go like, you know, you want to like try to suck some of it back in. It does that to you on every sip with what is, in this case, a really finely tuned and loud, but not obscene balance of gin botanicals and that really just nice sweetened lime with those heavy impacts. And in this case, a sort of additional citrus bomb created by the bitters. It doesn't bitter the drink up much beyond what it would be. And in general, uh, I would say gimlets are rather you know, bitter drinks. It just happens to be the case that that's how they are. But this one sort of embraces that and makes that bitter note you get from the cordial a little bit more approachable. And in my mind, uh, it's the best goddamn drink I've ever had. <laughs> Not my spec per se, but gimlets in general. You take that into your mouth and you just get this nice sort of rolling bitterness. It kind of rolls towards you and gets a little bit louder as those gin botanicals come in. And then you get this, this nice, like a balance between this sort of tingling, that like goes along the sides of your tongues and kind of your tongue and just rolls over your mouth. And, and, and it just, it's just, it's light and intense, but welcoming. And every sip does the same thing. That's my favorite part about it, I think. Every time you take a sip of a good gimlet, your mouth should want to go, you know, you should be like, hmm, tart, I like that. It should be just so bracing. And it does that, the gimlet does that. A good sour in general should do that. And a gimlet does that without needing any fresh juice or syrup. Uh, and that's awesome. <laughs> it's it's just so delicious. And the best part is you, they're very summer friendly because of their prominent citrus, you know, flavors and, and how bracing and bright and cold and refreshing they can be. But you can have them year round because you can get Rose's lime juice year round. It's a it's a preserved product. It's great. And Rose's gets a lot of a lot of shit these days for being what it is. I think simply because we all expect you know a combination of fresh lime juice and syrup to be better. And yeah, sure for a, a, like a margarita. Yeah, absolutely for a gin sour. Yeah, of course nowadays sure. But a gimlet specifically is designed to take the best parts of gin and that cordial and exemplify them in a manner that is entirely honest and comes from a place where it was necessary to do so. I mentioned at the top of this that there are uh, like maybe, maybe if, if even a full handful, a handful of cocktails that are actually medicinal. Funnily enough, Two of them come from the British Royal Navy, but that's neither hither nor thither. In the context of why this was created, it was a solution to a problem. People needed vitamin C and this got it into them without making them sick. The only other cocktail I can think of off the top of my head that accomplishes a medical, like a medical goal like that is a gin and tonic, which lengthens quinine that was used to prevent malaria for British uh, soldiers in Africa. I mean, that's, that's worth saying something because a lot of Cocktails claim to come from medicinal places. Even bitters has a history as a medicinal um, treatment in Prohibition era um, America. So it it's it's just it's just great. It's just great, and you should make one or seven and enjoy them by yourself because you earned it. Trust me, you deserve it. Oh man, that is so good. And you know that that bit of basil on top. 
I really wish it was micro basil because it wouldn't be so big in the fucking glass. But it does give you this really nice herbal sort of just grassiness and that kind of peppery bite that basil has to it on the smell. And it, it, it hits you with that up front and it kind of lets the flavors of the gimlet come in behind it and kind of sneak up on you a little bit. And it's just really green and refreshing. And ah, I love this drink. Love this drink so much. That has been our episode today on the Gimlet, a classic cocktail meant to keep sailors from dying at sea, which uh, in most other contexts, alcohol used to keep people from dying is uh, not not a common combination. I'll give you that much. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and follow me on my socials. They're showing up on the screen for you now. And hey, go ahead and watch more videos. They're popping up right over here, like that video right there. Oh, look at that. That's a good one right there. I like that one. Subscribe if you want to catch one more of the, you know, more of these videos. I make them every single Friday, and then sometimes on Tuesdays, like this upcoming Tuesday, where you might find a, another Gimlet variation that I finally had a chance to get the stuff for and make happen. So, who knows? Keep your eyes peeled, buddy. Where's this outro going? Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, like, subscribe, follow. Do all that good stuff. Share the videos with your friends. Watch a bunch more. I don't know. I don't care. I have a gimlet and I'm going to go drink it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys around in the next episode. Remember to drink responsibly and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. And bye-bye.